Okay, welcome to a micro video. Uh, this is part of a series on simple calculations of different price elasticities of demand. And this video, let's take a few minutes to look at three examples of calculating cross price elasticity. So cross price elasticity measures the responsiveness of the quantity demanded for good A following a change in the price of another product. Substitute products, those are goods in competitive demand, well, they will have a positive cross price elasticity. Complementary goods, things that you buy together, their products in joint demand, and they typically will have a negative cross price elasticity of demand. So therefore the sign of the coefficient of cross elasticity will make a difference in this situation. The higher is the coefficient, the stronger is the cross price relationship between two products. Unrelated goods, unrelated products will have a cross price elasticity of demand of zero. So let's take a look at three examples of calculations of the type you might be asked to make. First example is in the market, the increasingly contestable market for online streaming. Uh, early on in 2019, the online platform Netflix announced that the monthly rate in the States would be going up to $15.99 instead of $13.99. And over the next three months, the number of subscriptions to Amazon Prime rose by 2.5%. Based on this information, estimate the cost, price, elasticity of demand for Amazon Prime services following a change in the cost or the price of a Netflix subscription. So classic cross price effect. Well, we have to fit into the formula, percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in the price of the related good. Uh, Netflix subscription has gone up by $2 from $13.99 to $15.99. If you do the calculation, that comes up to a plus 14.3%. Well, uh, Amazon Prime subscriptions increased by 2.5% set against that 14.3% hike in Netflix subscriptions. So we end up with a coefficient for cross price elasticity of plus, and the plus is important, plus 0.17. What does that suggest? Well, this hypothetical data suggests a low cross price elasticity of demand, but positive, and that suggests the two products are weak substitutes. Perhaps there's a, a strong degree of brand loyalty towards the Netflix platform offer. Here is our second example. It's the demand for chickens. Um, data finds that a 15% fall in the average price of frozen cuts of chicken in supermarkets leads to an 8% fall in the demand for fresh chilled chicken and a 1% decline in sales of free-range organic chicken. Uh, calculate the cross price elasticity of demand for fresh chicken and comment on the results. Well, this is the impact on the demand for fresh chicken following a fall in the price of a frozen cut. Put the formula in. Always put the formula in. You'll get credit for that in the exam, even if your workings prove to be inaccurate. So there's been an 8% fall in, sorry, there's been an 8% fall in decline for chicken on the back of a 15% fall in the average price of frozen chicken. So fresh chicken sales falling because frozen chickens become um, cheaper. Minus 8 divided by minus 15 gives a coefficient of plus 0.53. Both a fall in the price of frozen cuts led to a fall in demand for fresh chicken, suggesting that these two products are weak Substitutes 0.53 is positive, so they're substitutes, but it's not a high cost price elasticity, so they're suggesting they're fairly weak substitutes. Again, consumer preferences may well be fairly, fairly fixed across different income ranges, perhaps. Third example, third of three in this short video, let's look at the sale of Apple products. And indeed, at the start of 2019, Apple, ahead of the launch, I think, of the iPhone 11, lowered the starting price, the entry price of its iPhone 8 model in the States by $150. The iPhone 8 now costs $449. Over the same period, the number of Apple earphones and headphones over the same, um, essentially 200 in 2019, over that period, the number of Apple earphones and headphones, have you got one, uh, has grown by 40%. 
calculate the cross price elasticity of demand for Apple earphones with respect to the changes in the price of the iPhone 8. Well, it seems to me the first two examples were examples of substitutes. So it makes sense here to think of an example of a complementary price demand relationship. Let's put the numbers in. Again, just put the formula in. Formula gets you the mark, A mark, and they all add up. Uh, this time there's been a 25% fall in the price of the iPhone. Can you see it's fallen by $150? Now cost four four nine, so it must have cost five nine nine originally. It's come down from five nine nine to four nine nine. That's a one fifty change divided by the original five nine nine. That's a twenty five percent fall in the price, rounding up. Sales have gone up by forty percent, caused by in part by a twenty five percent fall in the price of an iPhone eight. So it's plus forty divided by minus twenty five, giving a coefficient this time. And this is important of minus 1.6. That suggests a figure of minus 1.6 suggests that actually these two products are fairly close complements. The, the falling cost of the iPhone product range may well be helping to stimulate sales of the earbud wireless Apple earphones. OK, there we go. Three examples of how to calculate cross price elasticity of demand. I hope you found that helpful.